It's my great honor to be here to give a lecture here to explain uh, my thought on the, the name and numbers. But you know, in in the presentation file, is not uh, everything is relevant to the name and numbers. I try to give some thought on my thinking recently. I think it's just like a discussion or brainstorming. So it's, I, I'm not sure what's the background of everybody here, but I try to, to give explanation. And because we, we have, have an interaction time for about 40 minutes, so I think we have, have enough time to discuss. Uh, as mentioned, I, I used to work working for ICANN and CENEC. Now I'm a professor for Tsinghua University and Chinese Academy of Sciences, uh, both on policy, uh, public policy and uh, uh, computer science. So for the new uh, independent think and do tank, uh, full institution is just the one to build a platform uh, to do something for the internet. So if I have interest, I will give five minutes to explain that in the last uh, slide of this presentation. Uh, I think it's a really three topic we will we'll cover in my um, presentation. Uh, and I, I, I try to explain what's the, the meaning for the internet name and numbers. I just stand here for, for, for the video recording, right? Yeah, okay. Sorry. I, I, and, uh, uh, but in on that, uh, the, this year is uh, uh, 15 years anniversary for internet. So, so there's a lot of discussion about n name and numbers. But if we look at the future of uh, one or two decades, what will be happen for the name and numbers? And then uh, I think we, we can have an open discussion to discuss what's the future uh, infrastructure and the, what's the future fundamental resource for the internet. Of course, you know, sure. I think so I, I try to circulate so many hot topic. There's, uh, you know, Internet of Things and 5G and quantum computing, cloud computing, AR, VR, 3D printing, big data. There's a lot of hot topic, hot technologies in recent years. So, so I think it's a, especially you know, you know, in my country in China, uh, in the past ten years, there, there's the every wave, uh, you know, in the very beginning the big data, and then now very hot topic is five G because in last month, the the uh, central government just issued the full license for five G operators. So to encourage the adoption for the five G technologies and the and the market. So, but there's a lot of lot of hot topic. What's the relationship among those topic, those technologies? So, and also I may also mentioned the blockchain. It's also a top topic in recent five years. So, so there's a lot of hot topic. But you know, if we look at the, as a computer scientist, so there's just the, the five unit in the Harvard and Princeton structure. So, you know, there is uh, just like the internet science on 5G is relevant to the input. And AR, VR, 3D printing is relevant to output. And uh, the quantum cl cloud computing is, is relevant to the computing system. And the big data is relevant to the storage system. So, you know, you know it's just a, a model to think about the, 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 the part of the new, new technologies. And, uh, of course, the most important thing is the identifier system. It's just like the, the control system of the, the computer. So, you know, we need to input the data and output the data and to compute, compute the data and uh, store the data. But the most important is the control system, how to get the data and out, output and, and compute and store it. So that means the, the, if we compare the whole internet to be a computer, that means that you can, you will know what's the relevant uh, relationship among those uh, terminologies. And uh, why the identifier system is very important for internet, because it's a, in some sense, it's a control system of the whole internet. So it's very, very key system. Of course, we discussed a lot of AI in the past two days. But I think it's, from my point of view, uh, AI is some, something like the application because it's a combination for so many technologies to support AI. So in some sense, you know, just, just like we use computer, yeah, we don't care that what kind of input, output, uh, computing system, story system. We just care more how to use the computer. 
just like the internet, we don't take care, you know, care more about the the, the three D printing, uh, the the five G or or big data or quantum computing. You know, the ordinary people don't don't know the technologies. They don't care more about how to use the internet. What's the benefit for internet? Even they don't know what's the meaning for AI, but they just know I can query the information in the internet and get it back. If it can use the AI technology, I don't care. So that's the, the whole internet in structure. And another model for to understand the, 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 the importance for identify system is just like this model. Is that I call that is three plus two. Why uh, I call it three plus two is three is a three layer for the internet. The top layer is the different kind of uh, internet applications. And the lowest layer is the physical infrastructure, just like the fiber and the servers, switch, routers, a lot of uh, physical infrastructure. But most important thing is the logical infrastructure, just like DNS, and, and also including the DSCP or RPK and a lot of uh, system. But the most important thing is the domain name system. So because without the domain name system, there'd be no interconnection among those applications. And without the domain name system and also some uh, IP address system, the, the physical infrastructure cannot be connected with each other. So that's why the logical infrastructure is very important to connect the different layer and the amount the uh, specific layer. And for each layer, we would have both technology and policy issue. For example, especially for DS, for domain name, for logical infrastructure, for technology will be developed by IETF and the policy will be declared by ICANN. And even for in the application layer, for you know, some social network or AR, VR, or so many applications, or even the smart city, they also have the technology and policy issues. Even for, for physical infra infrastructure, they have the both policy and technology issues. So it's a, it's a three plus two model for internet development and governance, internet governance. Why I mention is uh, both de development and governance. I think it's very easy to, to understand is uh, for technology issue and policy issue is the most important things for governance. Even for development, if we want to develop a new internet business, you should clarify which layer you are in. And uh, if you only uh, take care of the technology issue, and without consideration policy issues, you will feel. Uh, I just want to give an a example. You know, it's a, uh, there's a car sharing company called Didi in China. It's just like Uber in, in, in the world because, you know, Uber China was acquired by this company. So this company, the, the founder of this company is a very uh, young, young guy. He's, uh, he's uh, less than 40s. So it's a very uh, good company now. Its value is more than 40, uh, 40 uh, billion US dollars now. So, you know, it's a, it's a talent for the technology and the product. So, but, you know, they have, he's also my close friend. I give him a lot of advice. You need to take care of more policy and governance issues. But, you know, there's so many investors try to encourage him to extend the business, to make it larger, but, not too many people take care of the policy issues. But in last year, there is a big issue for, for this company because, you know, a girl was killed by the driver. So they think that it's a big issue. But, you know, after three months, another girl was killed again. So this company feel very nervous. Even the, the central government gave this company a very big pressure. You need to solve this issue. But even that, even for the traditional uh, taxi company, the people was killed by driver. It's not a very, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, in some sense it's not popular, but you know, it's, it will happen very often. But because it's an internet company, so the, the people ask the, 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 the car sharing company, the DD, to take the responsibilities. But they lack lack of the knowledge how to do the governance issue. After that, after two girls were killed, they pay much more attention to the policy issues. So now, if you use the the the, the APB of the DD, so you know if you uncomfortable because they record the voice, 
and have a very strict policy for security, you know, it lowered down the user experience very much. That's the issue. So just like if you, if you use this model, that means in the very beginning, this company need to care the policy issues, the guidance issues, but not. So eventually there is some big influence for this company. Now their value is in some sense is lower down. Of course, we, we need to uh, discuss the, the domain name system. This is uh, just the query uh, procedures for the, for the domain name system. I just call that the uh, domain name system service architecture is uh, including, it's uh, one system, uh, two kind of service, and three factors to, to, to care, and the four aspect. And it's one, two, three, four, right? So there's, as I mentioned, there's a lot of, lot of applications. I think it's not 100%, but um, over 90% application we use the minimum system to query that IP address and then to start the communication with other servers. So the applications need to send their queries to their local agent. We call it a, it's a recursive server. That means the IP address we config in your computer, say it's a recursive server IP address. The application needs to send the domain name uh, uh, query to the uh, recursive server. Uh, Isn't mostly the, the, the IP address of the recursive server was, was uh, automatically configured by the, the ISP. On, and uh, of course, you can modify that, but nobody, most of the people don't know how to modify that. And the recursive server will send the domain name query to the root server, and the root server will return the IP address for the domain name back to the recursive server. And then the recursive server will send another query to query the top level domain uh, server to query the domain name and uh, what's the IP address for next layer. And then the, the recursive server send the query again to, to other level servers to get the, the, the IP address back, finally. Of course, you know, you know the, the, they will do such kind of queries for many times if there's no catch in the recursive server. Mostly, you know, when I do some testing uh, many years ago, when I uh, still a uh, PhD candidate, there's, uh, you know, we do some uh, testing for the DS queries. Uh, some domain name need more than 40 before there were 40 queries to finish the DNS query to get the IP address back. You know, it's a very interesting, it's a lot of queries because, you know, they send the query to, to, the, to the servers, but they need to return back another domain name, and then, you know, it's, uh, it's round trip queries. Eventually, uh, they get the IP address back, you need a lot of time. So that's why uh, they, they need the cache in the recursive server to improve the performance. Of course, you know, that means use servers. The root server and the TLD domain name servers and other level servers, they are the database in some sense. It's just a database. So it's a database for the mapping uh, database for domain name and the IP address. And the recursive server just like the, the agent to help the user the applications to query the uh, domain name data from root servers. So we call this is authoritative service. So that means we have two kind of service. One is the recursive service. That means agent to query the domain name server on behalf of the applications. That one is the authoritative servers. They storage the mapping database of the domain name and IP address. Okay, that means the those two kind of service, we call that is domain name system. And uh, you know, recently there is a lot of argument about the the, the domain name uh, governance, right? because you know, you know, if without catch in the recursive service. I mean, the application needs to send query to the recursive server and then to go to the root server firstly. That means the root server should be very important for the whole domain system. So how to manage the data 
in the root server is very important. So, you know, as Professor mentioned, I'm the former VP for ICANN. But the, what's the main responsibility for ICANN? So I can now have over three or 400 staff now. What's the main responsibility for ICANN? You know, the main responsibility for ICANN is how to maintain the database of root servers. The database we call it is zone file. It's just a text, text file. Even now in the, in the text file of the root servers only, you know, uh, it's less than 2,000 records. The procedure to maintain the root server is, you know, it's just like uh, the administrator of the top level domain, they just send a query to Anna. And Anna updated the, the database of version who maintained the, the primary server for root servers. And then it will be synchronized to other uh, 13 uh, root servers. In this procedure, that mean, I can be a coordination body who can update the data for specific tabula domain, just like .com or .cn, .th, .gp. But it's very interesting, you know, in the very beginning for, for the root servers, it's very simple procedures for uh, tabula domain administrators to send the update to the root server. I, I know that when I be the uh, technical contact for .cn, we just send email to write down what kind of IP address I want to change for .cn. And then just send this uh, plain text e email to Anna. So, and Anna will verify the email and send a request to DOC, the Department for Commerce of the US, US government. And they verify that and then to tell the version you can update. So it's very dangerous, you know. That means the hacker can just, you know, get the message I sent to, to ICANN and modify the DOSIN uh, IP address to be another one. But these procedures was, you know, continued for many years. I think it's since, you know, 2010 or 2011. So I can up upgrade that system. You know, that means that the top level domain administrator can have their user password to manage their IP address. But before that, for many, many years, it's only used email. So, you know, let me, for this layer, they invest a lot of money and upgrade the infrastructure to, to protect the security. But in root server layer, it's very vulnerable for the security. But recently, I think it's a lot of improvement, but it's not enough. Now it's a big issue for the Internet governance is how to make sure that ICANN itself is accountable and transparent. And make sure that ICANN is a trustworthy body to maintain the root server database. Because, you know, the domain name system just like a tree. If we delete some record in the root server database, that means this tree was disappeared. Just like the so many countries have their country code, tabla domain, they will disappear. So now, even now, uh, in 2000, uh, 2014, the March 2014, the US government announced they will give the, the transition, the, the, the management for the critical internet resource um, from US government to the global modest stakeholder community. But after two years in, uh, in 2016, in, in September, end of September, Eventually, this would happen. Now we have a, have a new uh, organization called PTI. But a PTI is affiliated with ICANN now. So even now, there's so many uh, countries worry about the, the accountable and the transparent of PTI. Even PTI now have uh, uh, five independent uh, board members to make decision for PTI. But it's not enough. Because, you know, in some sense, California was registered in California. I mean, ICANN was registered in California. They f will follow up the California law. So now there is a lot of discussion in the ICANN community. You know, in a couple months ago, when Russia declared they want to do some tests, to test what will happen if the ICANN delete the, the RU, if the Russia can be survival 
or not. I do believe that in the world, that a lot of countries will have the same concern. If I can delete their country code, what will be happen for their internet? Because there's so many uh, infrastructure, especially for some government website, would rely on the, their country code, country code tablet domain. So, but now, in terms of technically, you cannot avoid that. Even if it doesn't happen in the past years, yeah, the U.S. government or I can never do some wrong thing to modify the top level domain. But because internet has merged into the, the society, the, the politics and technology, science and culture very much, that means the worry and concern on this issue will be bigger than before. So the next step is how to make sure I can end PTA to be accountable and transparent is a very important issue. Yeah. And uh, for the top level domain, just like I mentioned, or .ca, or .gp, .th, .com, so for this layer, that means the registrant need to submit the, the modifier or application or, or delete uh, app application to the registrar and then they will submit to the registry. Uh, just like, you know, just like the com, is very sign is the registry for the com. So if I register uh, shadowly.com, so I, if I want to modify the IP address uh, relevant to my domain name, I need to contact the registrar, and then they will submit to the, the request to registry, and then to modify the database. It's very interesting. Also, there is the data flow, from the registrant to registrar and registry, there is another kind of issue. For example, even version or .com will be very secure for that system because the registrar need to synchronize the, the modification uh, request to that database. So how to make sure that the registrar is secure? And how to make sure the registrant can protect and keep their user password very secure? I can give an example. You know, in 2000, 2009, I think, it's, uh, no, it's 2010, I think it's January 2010. You know, there is the largest search engine in China called Baidu. Yeah, it's just the Chinese Google. And Baidu is very popular uh, in China. They say, you know, now is the market value is more than 100 uh, billion US dollars. It's a lot of company. But, you know, nobody of Baidu took care of their, the secure of, of their domain name system, even they invest a lot of servers to protect their certain union system. So they register Baidu in a registrar called register.com. And then somebody maybe know this. So, but, you know, it's very interesting. In January of 2010, some hacker just called the registrar, registrar.com, to clarify, I'm the administrator, oh, sorry. I'm the administrator of Baidu.com. I forgot my user password. Could you give me the, the password of my Baidu.com? You know, it's very interesting. Register.com just gave the password to him. To him. So the hacker modified the IP address of bed.com to, you know, to redirect the, the, the bed.com to Yahoo or other website. So in some sense, the bed.com was disappeared in the internet for a couple of days. So, you know, even they modified the, the, the pa password and to crack that. But, you know, because there's a catch in the recursive server around the world. That means even they crack the IP address and the user cannot access the bad.com around the world. So that's an issue. Of course, now that the registry is much better than before, but you know, we have over 2000 registrars was accredited by ICANN. How to make sure every registrar have the capacity to protect the, the data of the users is another issue. 
Of course, we need another layer, just like uh, google.com, the dot com, but there should be a Google layer. So how to manage the DS? The, the, yes. You know, there's a lot of, uh, now there's more than 300 million uh, domain names registered around the world now, including dot .com, dot .net, the .org, and uh, the many CCTRDs. There are over 300 million. But not everybody, I mean, not everyone have the capacity to run the DNS servers. So they just outsource their DNS, DNS service to other service providers. We call it it's a managing DNS. So in the world, there's a lot of uh, managing DNS uh, service providers. Another interesting issue happened. How, if I have no capacity to run the DNS server, how to make sure that the managing, managing DNS service provider have the capacity? I can give another example, which uh, happened in 10 years ago in 2008. I think it's 2009, just 10 years ago, it's uh, in May 2009. There is a managing DNS service providers because there are about less than a million, uh, less than a million domain names uh, was hosted by, by this company. But this company only have four servers around China. So the hacker tried to attack one of the domain names among those half million uh, domain names. Only one, one attack one because they just have the internet game service. Because the competitor want to shut down the, the service for that, that uh, internet game. You know, it's a big cost to, to have a DDoS attack for the internet game service. So, but it's easy to shut down the end service. So they choose to, at, to attack the many Indian service. It's a disaster, you know. I mean, they have another half million uh, domain name was hosted in these root four servers. But because only one domain name was attacked, it caused other half million domain names cannot be served. So it's the disaster in China. Almost six provinces, the internet cannot be served, shut down. Because, you know, there's so many applications really rely on the Made in Indian server because that server cannot provide a service. That means so many applications will have problem. So the, pro the application will query the DNS server again and again and again, cause a lot of traffic. So, it, you know, that traffic almost shut down the, the, the internet in China. Almost half was influenced and six problems cannot be served. So if you look at the, the, the three layer, how to maintain the domain name database in root server, how to maintain the database in top level domain database, and how to maintain the other service, other layers uh, uh, DNS servers are very complicated. You know, because DNS is a one system, but nobody can control every servers in this system. If you do some testing, there is uh, over 10 million servers supported to minimum service around the world. I think now we more than 10 million. But nobody, there's no one can control every server. So it's a very big distributed system around the world. But nobody can make sure the whole system is secure how to work together. So I think it's a big governance issues and it's a very big collaborative issues. I think it's uh, because, you know, for the name and numbers, as I mentioned, it's a very complicated system. They have a uh, different kind of stakeholders. You know, this picture, I just uh, use this picture. Uh, I just download this picture from ICANN website. You can just uh, download that. It'll be very clear. I think it's very small. The character is not very clear, but you can use that in the ICANN website. It, I think it's, it's a very interesting uh, picture. Just have a three layer. As I mentioned, it's the physical layer and the logical layer and the application layer. 
the cut that is social and economic layer. So, you know, in this picture show how many organizations was relevant to the name and numbers. They mentioned a very uh, key organization is that because ITF makes a standard and uh, in some sense domain name and IP address is some kind of parameters for the internet protocol, uh, but it's very, very important. But you know that we have uh, other kind of parameters, just like the port numbers. So the main function for ANA is to maintain the database for domain name, IP address, and uh, the, the, the internet protocol parameters. And uh, you know, we will use NRO to allocate IP address to different continental, just like in Asia Pacific, if you have a and uh, North American have Aaron, A-I-I-N, and uh, we have Latinic in, in Latin American, and uh, African in Africa, and Rapid Z in, in Europe, yeah. So it's, uh, they will take care of the, the IP allocation for five continentals. But for each country, it's a different kind of model. Just like, you know, in Asia Pacific, they have the, uh, the National Internet Registry, yeah, they will have on behalf of the country to allocate IP address in that country. But you know, the other continental, just like Europe, they just get the IP address directly from the FMC. I think it's a different kind of model for, for each continental. And even the, in China, you know, we have NR is National Internet Registry, but not a, every member uh, of the, the China uh, internet community will get the IP address from the NR. We just get the IP address from the APNIC directly. I think it's a, it's a it's also a, it's a, a IP address community. And for, for domain name, as I mentioned in the three layer, that means uh, ICANN will maintain the, the, the database for root servers and increase uh, the tablet domain into the root server, of course, based on some, some rules uh, defined by, by ICANN community. So, Of course, you know, you know, for for domain name now, uh, we have another uh, hot topic is about the GTRD. I think GTRD is not a new topic, but it uh, has a lot of lot of issue. You know, in the very beginning, I can uh, community make decision to open the new uh, generic top level domain registration. But you know, the in the very beginning, because they want to increase the the new applications and new competition. So, so that mean if I want to register .com, uh, domain name in .com, because you no, know, I cannot choose the right word because the lot of registrations I can cannot choose my brand or my name, but it, everybody wants to have that name. So, if you increase increase the new GTRDs, that mean I can have a more choice, more option to register. So, in some sense, to increase the new competition now is good, but another issue is how to increase the new applications. It's a big topic. You know, for ICANN community, there's so many registry earn a lot of, earn a lot of money. Yeah, because every user or every restaurant needs to register more internet names. For example, maybe before that, I need to register the .com, the .net, or maybe my CCTRD. It's maybe less than 10, it's okay. But now, you might need to register more than 1,000. And you pay a lot of dollars. It's a big issue. So there's uh, so many, uh, you know, domainers just want to start this business, to get a lot of money for the res restaurant, for the users. I mean, the competition now is good, but why, why I need to register a lot of domainers? If I don't want to use that, it's just want to uh, do a brand protection. It wastes a lot of money. I think now for ICANN community, there is a big issue is how to increase the new application for the new generic tablet domain. But the community have no more discussion on that. So maybe there is a big opportunity for the Internet of Things because you will use the domain name to be an identifier and to, to connect it so many kinds of applications, but I don't know, who knows, yeah. So if I can open the second round, you know, the first round they have more than 
one thousand uh, new generic, generic tablet domains. In the second round, maybe have another ten thousand or, or, or hundred thousand um, new GTRDs. What will be happen if I'm a an user? How many domain I need to register, and how much I need to pay? I think that's not a governance issue for the ICANN community. So, so this picture, I think it's a very wonderful picture to show the procedures, how to maintain the domain name and IP address, and then to clarify what kind of rules for each uh, organization. I, I think I don't, don't want to explain more because I, you know, I have only have I think 50 minutes left. So, I'll give some explanation for the importance of the name and numbers and uh, the, the international or global organizations to, to maintain the domain name and the numbers and IP address. But the most important thing I want to describe, what's the future? What's the future? This year is that 15 years anniversary for the, the global internet. But I try to, to summarize the development for internet. In the past 40 years, I just have the first phase is, uh, is um, since uh, 1974, is uh, the first paper for, for TCP IP to connect different kind of uh, networks. And uh, in the first two decades, you know, the most important thing is how to make sure one data packet can transfer from this server to another server in an in a unreliable network. So the TCP IP is very important. And that time, in the first two decades, the IP address is very important. It's the most important focus for internet governance. In the second two decades, since uh, 1994 to uh, five years ago in 2014, I think it's, uh, you know, in 1994 is a very key year in the internet history because at that time, the HTML was invented and the first web server was set up and even Yahoo was born in that year. So, so HTML is, is a very important protocol in some sense because HTML try to give the tag for the data. We use the tag to, to clarify the, the different kind of data. So, and then we use browser to, to explain the, the data which was tagged by HTML. So that means we need to, the, a lot of data is, uh, the internet is, is unconstructed, but if we try to construct the data in an unconstructed network. So that's why HTML is very important. But now we enter into the surface. So I just call that is uh, just like that the first two decades is in internet data packet, and the second two decades is internet information. And the, in the second two decades, the most um, uh, important focus for governance is domain name. But in the third two decades for internet, so, you know, I just uh, think it started in 2014 because that year is very important. I mentioned that uh, because internet uh, became more important and important, so the U.S. government gave up the, the uh, management for, for, for ICANN and IANA to just give the function to the global motor stakeholder community in 2014. Yeah, why they gave up? Because internet is very important. And at that year is the, uh, is the first full functional uh, blockchain system was published, is Ethereum. And then compared to the, the Bitcoin, you know, the Ethereum is a full function, including the encryption and the distributed system and also the smart contract. So that year is very important. That, I mean, if we think about the, the new governance focus compared to the past the four, four decades, the IP address, domain name, what's the future governance focus? I don't know, you know, you know I cannot, cannot predict that, but I think that token is very important. Yeah, as you know that in two weeks ago, the, the oh, almost finished, yeah. So I think it's, uh, I mean, token is very important. I, I, I think it's just a call your uh, attention on this, uh, how to make sure that the blockchain system, I, I, I mean, the blockchain system is not the current Bitcoin system. I mean, the, the new blockchain system will be a very fundamental infrastructure to, you know, to make sure the data can be interoperable globally. 
So that means the token in the blockchain system, system it should be very important. Of course, you know, I, I don't want to spend more time to discuss the strategy for the, for the human history. But nowadays, a very hot topic is the fourth industrial revolution, which was uh, proposed by the founder of the World Economic Forum, Professor Schwab. So they tried to clarify in the, in the past uh, 300 years from the first industrial revolution, which invented the railway, and uh, the second industrial revolution invented the electricity, and the third uh, industrial revolution invented the, the, the computer network. And now we enter into the new era for the fourth industrial revolution. It's very interesting that the, the, the new era for the fourth industrial revolution is just relevant to the third phase of the internet development. It's all in the same, uh, same time point. So that means because the internet will support the fourth industrial revolution and the fourth industrial revolution will support the, the human civilization. So that means it will be very, very important. What kind of things we need to do for internet and how to make sure that the future internet can support the fourth industrial revolution to make sure this revolution can support the new human civilization. I'm not sure if I clear for the logic. So, if we recognize the importance for internet, we need to know what's the current challenge, most the challenge for current internet. From my personal perspective, there's two challenge. One is to enlarge the digital divide. The second one is the internet fragmentation. Why I mention that? You know, just like, you know, I give one example, you know, uh, okay, enough time. So, you know, China now is the internet, uh, the second largest internet economy in the world. But if we compare the, the digital eco economy between China and US, it's almost half than the traditional economy. Because the current GDP of China is almost two thirds compared to America. But if you consider the digital economy, only one third. That's China. But you know, if we compare other countries for the new digital economy, even it's lower. Even now, you know, for the California, the, the one of the state of, of the United States now is the fifth largest economy in the world because of the new technology, because of the internet. That's a big digital divide. The second thing is the internet fragmentation. Why I mention that? Because there's a lot of laws to protect data. Yeah, we mentioned that for the privacy issues, for the national security issues, everybody, every organization, every country wants the data was limited to their, you know, domestic or their organization or keep to be the private information. But if we try to protect the data very strictly, how to make sure the data can be you know, shared by others. If you no know data sharing, what's the value for internet? So now it's a big issue. We mentioned in GDPR, and we mentioned that the law in California, and we, now also China have the, its own cybersecurity law to protect data. Now is the big moment to think about what the internet will be fragmented. That's the issue. There's two challenges. So two challenges, we need to solve this issue. What's the technical solution? What kind of innovation for us to give a new infrastructure of the internet to make sure to face the two challenges? If we maintain the current infrastructure, that'd be a big issue. The internet to be fragmented and the digital divide will be larger. Even in China, if we consider tier one city, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, uh, compared to other 300 cities, the big digital divide. And uh, what's the governance model? We discussed a lot of the governance issues. Of course, we need to get a lot of experience from the traditional internet governance. 
But we need to face the new challenge for the new phase of the internet development and the new phase for the industrial revolution and the new phase for the human civilization. What's the governance model? Especially consider the, the AI governance and also digital governance, whatever. I think technology is not very important. The issue is very important. We need to solve the issue to make sure that we can bridge the digital divide and to narrow the, the fragmented in, internet. So, I think most of the things I have mentioned, why I, I want to build the, the Fuxi institution, you know, it's only a startup. It's a non-profit organization. It, it's very small now. Yeah. But I just want to use my, my background and experience. Want the new institution can do something for the internet in the new phase of internet of knowledge and you know, value. So, we can use the internet to support China economy transformation. Especially, it's not only for China itself, it's also the economy transformation around the world. And then to support the industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution, of course, we support the, the new human civilization for the digital uh, civilization. So that's my thinking. It's a, it's a the first institution will be a research community for the technology governance and also, you know, uh, culture. And we want to build a collaborative exchange platform for, you know, policymakers and entrepreneurs and uh, academia. So that means it, it will be a platform. It will be a very open platform. Yeah. Just to give some, some, find some funding to support the organization. I, I don't know what will ha happen in the next two decades, but I, I do believe the Fuxi institution, maybe in the future, there are hundreds, hundreds of the institutions just like Fuxi institution around the world. They can work together to, to do something for internet development, to make sure the internet can be a very uh, fundamental infrastructure to support the society and economy development, to make sure we can narrow the digital divide, we can bridge the internet fragmentation. That's the... the, the Key issue I'm, I'm thinking about. And I just call for the open discussion. I think now is uh, Professor mentioned I didn't finish the lecture in 2 p.m. I think it's uh, six, three minutes. Uh, of course, I, I give some, some links, but it's not enough. I will try to update that, give more links uh, in the website. Yeah, I think you can give uh, to read the reference.